But I guarantee you, it ain't no black people on that sh- on that submarine. <laughs> I guarantee you, I would put money on it. Ain't no black people on ain't no black people on the boat that lost them. Well, fuck about the Titanic. This is crazy. You for you to go down on a for you to get inside for you to get inside a vehicle that you can't open. Think about that. I wouldn't get in a car that I couldn't open. Welcome back, BS with Brian Simpson, episode 68. Um, don't forget to follow us at BS Comedian on all socials. And uh, uh, going to email us any questions, comments, concerns. Email us at BS with Brian Simpson at gmail.com. Um, and don't forget, I will be, I will be in Denver at Comedy Works uh, on July, the third week in July. It'll be July 13th, 14th, and 15th, and then I'll be at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York, the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Um, and a little sneaky visit to Los Angeles, August 10th, 11th, and 12th. I'll be running my hour there at, at the Belly Room in the, at the Comedy Store. So, um, yeah, that's what we got going on. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, buy stuff from the sponsors anyway you want to support the podcast. Also, we now have a Patreon. The link will be in the show notes if you want to help us pay for production and get access to the after show, a Patreon exclusive mini pod that we record after each week's episode. All right? What's going on, Josh? What's going on, Rob? How much, man? Anything particular on your minds? Now Rob? I'm just trying to survive a baby. These yeah, things, that seems like a, they never stop shitting. Yeah, so it, take, it, take, it takes a few years. The sooner you can teach them to wipe their own mm-hmm. ass, the better. Oh, four, 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 when, when do you learn to wipe your ass? About four, five? Depends if you're a boy or girl. My son took him to five, and uh, my daughter at like two. So that, so you're making a, a sweeping judgment of all male and females based on that? Yes. Okay. What about you, Rob? You, well, you, that's your first kid. I guess I don't have. I don't. I know. still haven't learned how to wipe my own ass, so I'm not a good data point. So you think? So you really, you really believe it's whether it's a girl or a boy? Because mm-hmm. you've heard other people go, the boys take longer. No, it's just that boys are grosser and they don't care about their hygiene, and and girls do. Oh, well, damn! Doesn't that take till like 13? Well, the thing is, boys don't care about <laughs> boys don't care about their hygiene until girls do. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, hmm. Usually, like if 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 it's, if something's gonna change, it's gonna be because a woman is like, "Hey, you need to fucking wash your ass." But then I know some people that's, you know, that's you know there. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, also, it was Juneteenth yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be on Kill Tony. I was on Kill Tony last night, but I think it, I think it comes out in two weeks or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, man, that was so much fun. Uh, myself and. Um, Trevor Wallace, very funny guys. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, uh, also, also um, Diablo still fun. In case y'all were wondering, that is my number one. What past, level you're at? Number one pastime. I'm a level seventy six druid. And what does it top out at? Hundred. One hundred. Yeah. Tops it at one hundred. However, I, I learned it takes the same amount of XP to go from level 85 to 100 as it did to get from level 1 to 85. So, yeah, it's a long it's a long way to 100. That's why I can't believe somebody got to 100 on hardcore mode within like three days of the game coming out. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. Even with a weak head start, that's crazy. Even if the, even if the stick counted from, because, you know, they sent out review copies of people, even if they got to keep that progress, it's like that's still crazy as fuck. That's so much time. You got to be playing in teams. The people that the Blizzard watch this podcast, for sure. That's why I complain about, I complain <laughs> yeah, about Diablo have. specifically on here. Um, yeah, the Druid's a little underbaked. All right. You know, no word? That's what it feels. It, you know, at least for me, if it, it, felt, it feels like the Druid was the last class they made and they kind of rushed. Because there, there is some cool mm. shit, but some of the stuff is like just little ticky to. Like, because like, like, the game's so polished in all these other ways, but like, there's a thing that's supposed to make like a lightning aura around me, 
and it's just like blue mm-hmm. smoke looking. It's not like it's not like it doesn't look. It looks like somebody was like halfway through animate. It was like I need get the fucking druid out now. And I was like, all right, all right. you know, <laughs> like not everything, but like some is a lot of little things like that specifically relating to the druid, where it's like hmm, nobody thought about making this look as cool as everything else. You know, you know what I've been playing, Brian. Uh, I do it do it when I'm in charge of watching our baby. Is uh, I've been playing the Miles Morales Spider Man game. On, I'm hearing uh, this. I'm hearing this on PlayStation, dude. It's really fucking fun. It's it's really good for what I need it for, which is I need something that's fairly casual that I can just turn on, pick up right where I left off, play for like an hour or may or you know or less twenty thirty minutes or whatever, and then like pop off of it to change a diaper or whatever. Diablo's a little too hardcore. I can't, I mean, I would love to play Elden Ring, but it, that's, that's that's no longer going to be a part of my life. That's really hardcore. Yeah. 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 I would, but that's what I'm saying. The, the Miles Morales Spider-Man game is, I mean, it's kind of old. It's free right now on PlayStation Plus. If you have PlayStation Plus, you can get it for free. And uh, I played the... Amazing Spider-Man. I think that's what the other one was. That this is just based on the same engine or whatever. But she plays Miles. Um, it's really fucking fun. Um, web swinging is amazing. Uh, doing all the little ticky tack missions is amazing. Um, yeah. Strong recommend for that, especially if you have PlayStation Plus because it's free. Because it's free. Okay. Um, that's that's what we differ. I'm, I'm I have an, I mean you 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 made you forced me to buy a PlayStation, but mm-hmm. it's not here yet, and I, I have an Xbox. Well, the part of the part of the good thing about the um, PlayStation is that I think it probably has the lowest barrier of entry as far as doing regular streaming. So that may be something that we offer on the Patreon for people who are interested. Which we have had some interest from people writing in about that. About watching you stream. Streaming with us? No, no, no. Watching you stream. I'm just I, streaming via like Twitch or YouTube gaming uh, via the PS is like probably the just the easiest way to do it. It's the best integrated. Okay. Well, you, well, you don't have to, you don't have to fuck with all the Streamyard shit in OBS like you do with PC. Yeah, but that's how I game. I know, but you know, you can play Madden on PS and have fun. I wish I could. For whatever reason, the last time I tried to play Madden, well, this was on Xbox, but I think it's the same. It's an EA issue. But oh, maybe not because I wasn't on PlayStation. But apparently, like <clears throat> my old, old, old Xbox Live gamer tag. Is connected to my EA account, and wouldn't and so I can't connect my actual new Xbox gamer tag to my EA account because there's already a gamer tag attached to it. You can't attach a new one, and it, and it, since That's it's so the same, stupid. yeah, since it's the same email address, like I guess if you sign up for an EA account, like it's if you attach it to a game, it's for life. You can't like move. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> That's a crazy thing. Like, cause I, I haven't had, I haven't used that gamer tag in since like 2005 or something. <laughs> Elephant in the room this week. Titanic tourist submersible goes missing with search underway. Why is it the elephant in the room? That's just, I thought that was the most interesting uh, story this week. And also the one that every single news service that I use to collect stories for this pod, uh, um, had that as one of the top stories. The real little thing in the room you didn't want to talk about. Oh my God, this is killing me. What's going on? Talk to me. What's the real elephant in the room? That I didn't want the to real talk elephant about? in the room is the is the is the the Rogan Kennedy Hotez thing. Oh, well, there's no what's there to talk about. It's just gossip. Well, no, I mean there. I'm not as interested in like the question about what they would argue about or whatever on the on Rogan's pod or whatever, but um, 
I think that there are some interesting questions there and like your opinion on when is debate appropriate and in what venue? Because this is like a, this is not a new, I don't want to call it a tactic. I feel like that's like poisoning the well or whatever. But, you know, back in the day, um, creationists would like challenge evolutionary biologists to debates over evolution and say, okay, I'll put up $10,000 to a charity of your choice or whatever. And then when the evolutionary biologists refused to debate them, they would claim victory, right? And what I'm talking about here is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was on Rogan's pod recently and said a bunch of anti-vax stuff. And um, a virologist who is responsible for helping to create and promulgate um, a bunch of uh, patent-free vaccines kind of took him to task for it. And Rogan hopped on Twitter and said, hey, come on the show and debate him. Up. And I'm breaking up. Uh, sorry. Clear? On Twitter. Did you catch back up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, on Twitter. So, so yeah. So, the, yeah. The, short, the short version is basically... Rogan threw out a challenge to this Dr. Hotez to um, to come on his show with Kennedy and debate Kennedy on the efficacy of vaccines. And he said, I would, I'll donate $100,000 to the charity of your choice if you do it. And a bunch of people dogpiled on this scientist because he turned down the offer. He's like, no, I'm not interested in going on your show and debating. And but why is this interesting? Well, because I think it's interesting because do you do you, do you think he should have accepted the offer or do you think he should he was right to reject the offer? I think it's pointless. The, the, this, it's like all, it's pointless all, either way. all of this political stuff is po- like once something has become politicized, you're not going to change anyone's mm-hmm. mind. You know what I mean? That's why we try to avoid right. talking about the politicized stuff on here because it's it's like all it does is just make everyone, you know, run to their side and re- regurgitate their own talking points. It's like that because we're at this is, you know, this is the day and age where the truth is dead. You, you, you can't tell what's true. So all you have is what you want to be true and the information that supports that. Right. So, th- so mm-hmm. what would be the point in them? What would be the point in them debating? I don't think there's a point in them debating. I think right. that the scientist, the doctor, was correct in rejecting the offer. Yeah, but then why? But, but the, that's the, not that's not how it's being taken by a lot of people. Well, well, well the thing is, why poke the why poke the bear? It's like he was so, he was also talking shit, you know. Yeah, Cause, I think cause, the, because you you can't you can't choose neutrality once the once the fight has started, you know. True. It's like that's a. It's like it's like for me. It's like if you if you are if you're so over arguing with the other side, then don't argue with them. But you don't get to say you don't get to talk shit and then go. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not debating anymore. You know, that's now keep in mind. Also, I didn't. I haven't read through all the tweets and. All of that because again, that's that's junk food. That's that's for people that like what. That's not even something I'm gonna even a little bit interested in. Well, let me let me let me push back on that a little bit though because I think that you could make the argument. I, I mean, I will make the argument that it's one thing to tweet support for an article that you think debunks points that were brought up in a diff- in another format, like in a podcast. And and it's another thing to go and have a live debate in a venue where you can't really control the rules of engagement or where you don't believe that the interlocutor no, is going to no, be no, no. No, look, in good faith. This is what I mean, Rob. Do you know, do you remember in the, two, in the, in the early 2000s when, uh, when militant atheism became a thing? When it was like, you know, the rise of the four horsemen and all of that, all of that. I was I was one of those militant atheists, and it was very cringe and, and, and very embarrassing. Right, exactly, and that's what this is to me. 
It's like you just don't we just you don't see it because we you know you can't see the forest from the trees. But it's like the it's like some people get up every day and th- and this is what they do. They go out and debunk or they or they memorize the talking points to dunk on on the, whatever they see as their opposition or they write those talking points like some of these people. But but it's like I'm just not in that world. Like I don't get up every day and. You know, like I wouldn't, I've never, I can't remember the last time I've started a conversation with like, yo, did you hear what Donald Trump said or something like that? It's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care what, it, you know, because, because none of that is ever going to result in any substance. Mm, I hate this word. Substance. Some substantive change. Okay. None of it's going to be, you know, so it's like, it's like this, this is to, for, mo- for a lot of people, that's just a hobby. It's like what they do for fun, for entertainment is they go look up, you know, embarrassing or ridiculous shit about the opposition and they, and they fucking tell everyone, you know, and it's like, I just, that's not interesting to me at all. I don't even know. I didn't even know who this doctor was before this, you know, and the only reason I've even heard of this is because Rogan doesn't usually use Twitter this way. You know, he's right. I can't remember. I don't remember a time with him ever like actually like challenging someone to something. But that's the only reason I heard because it's so it was so unusual. So it rose to my attention. Mm-hmm. But I don't fucking care about it, not at all. Well, well, let me ask you this. Let's say because yeah, we we haven't heard of this Peter Hotez guy. I hope I'm pronouncing his name. It could be Hote or something like that. But this um, Peter Hotez guy uh, because. He's not one of these people who debates regularly. That's one of the reasons why he rejected the offer, right? Why he rejected the invitation. And I guess my question would be, let's say you're this doctor who works as, uh, he he creates vaccines. I mean, you're you're asking me if I would have taken the debate. The answer is no. No, 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 I'm gonna, no, 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 that's not, that's not my question. My question is, you're this guy where this is your career, right? And you've actually been on Rogan before, where- Yeah, I'm going on Rogan tomorrow. You talked about your career, right? Right. What's that? No, 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 I'm talking about Peter Hotez has also been on Rogan. Okay. He, he's he been a guest before in the past. So, so you wake up one morning and the biggest podcaster in the world has just hosted a presidential candidate, a Kennedy, who is one of the most well-known anti-vax conspiracy theorists, and they have shredded your career and your life's work. What is the appropriate response to that? Go on about your business. The advice here on BS with Brian Simpson is very consistent. Mind your business. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with you. Oh, you oh. Does he, but, but, if you're a scientist, do you have any sort of like duty to try to stem misinformation or? No? Well, see, that's another thing too. Is I think this is see the the left and the right get caught up in this that there's some that there is some imaginary person out there that's on the fence that you have a duty to convince, you know, or if they if they by simply hearing wrong things that they they'll be convinced and it's like nah man everyone's made up their mind you just like to fight that's my point is this is just an argument that's never that's never ending and you jump in a circle you're gonna be going around in a fucking circle who are you convincing who is who is who who is the joe rogan listener that's watched this doctor right you say he's been on there before and a politician that still hasn't had it. That still hasn't made their mind up and lived through the pandemic, right? So who's the, who is this 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 imaginary Rogan viewer that needs to be saved from misinformation? You know, that, that, that's not real. I don't know if that's fair though, Brian, because I think what happens is for the for the for a normal person, they hear like an interview like this, and if the person's like well spoken or they seem to like vaguely have their shit together. They don't seem like a tinfoil hat lunatic, right? And they say these things like, oh, there's mercury in the vaccines that can cause autism or whatever. Then 
their first thing is going to be like, wait, is that true? And then they like Google it, right? And they go, Do, does mercury in, in vaccines cause autism? And there needs to be somebody who's written, somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about, who's written from a factual standpoint, like why that's not true. Right? So it's not, it's not, it's not about attacking the person spreading what you believe is misinformation, but it is about like putting out correct information. Valid, correct information. Oh well, right? yeah. I'm all I'm all I'm all for that. Well, and that's what Hotez did. He 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 linked or uh sorry tweeted out a link to um an article that was contradicting the the claims that were made in the interview. Well see, well, see um, you, you say that you say that, but what I saw with the tweet the tweet that I saw said he basically said I'm so over correcting information on the Joe Rogan pop, or misinformation. That's what he said. So that's not putting mm. out correct information that is starting an argument that's, but you don't want but you don't want a fight. But, I see what you're so, so you don't get to go you don't get to go like you don't get to start a fight and then go i'm neutral you, you know now whether you whether you accept the debate or not is up, is up to you it's probably not a good idea for you to do that you know it's probably, it's probably a waste of your time but again you started a fight you're not out there correct you, you know you're not out there just putting out correct information that's 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 bullshit so it's like I, if, see, if it were me, I would never have even I would never have mentioned them at all if I didn't want to debate, if I didn't want to fight, because that is that's all Twitter is. It's like you do want to debate. You just want to debate in a, in a space where there's where no one can really challenge you directly. I mean, debating live and in person is a whole other thing than going back and forth on Twitter. You know, and right. some, do you think that de debating live and in person is a. Is ever a worthwhile thing, or do oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. When it's you're really good, just it's it's worthwhile when you're good at it, <laughs> and you know what you're yeah. talking about. Because I've watched again, like going back to the the atheism movement uh, in the early two thousands. I remember watching Christopher Hitchens go into a synagogue. He went to he went to a synagogue, or in, in, actually more than one place. He but he went to like a big ass mega church. And debated their pastor in front of their their flock about the existence of God. Now that's hardcore. And uh, and obviously, I mean, there's no winners or losers. But I mean, he was getting applause breaks and shit in a fucking church. You know what I'm saying? So some people are just, you know, listen. That gift of gab shit is real. You know, and and I think like the social media area era has fooled us into thinking that everyone that can talk is a speaker and that's not true just because just because everybody can speak but 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 there's generational speakers you know what i mean and maybe christopher hitches was one of them you know what i mean there's people that there's like the lebron james of talking and it's very few of those people on earth and some and the people that are that can really really do it that they're re they're really good at it and i'm and i'm not talking about like uh like fallacious arguments either you know, like you, like Trump liked to argue like that. Some people would say Trump was good at debate, but he just doesn't have shame. You know, so, you know, he's very quick. He's good at insults and stuff like that. But when you got to actually debate the merits of your ideas and not just uh, like win a back and forth thing, you know, that's a whole different thing, man. So anyway, my point is, but even in Christopher Hitchens didn't change anybody in that church's mind, I don't think. I, w I would love but to know. But don't you think... Don't you think his ability and his, I mean, it's partially his arguments because he did have some pretty good arguments, but also, you know, there's a reason why they call it a hitch slap when he would just have the perfect turn of phrase and just trap somebody in what yeah, they just said. Yeah. Um, don't you think that Christopher Hitchens helped promulgate or, or um, propagate the, like, atheism, or at least that version of atheism, because... He was fucking cool. He he did. Yeah. He was a great performer in these debates. You know, yeah. I think he was my he was my I favorite. Think, um, he was my favorite to watch. Yeah, I think I think the fear the fear for somebody like this Peter Hotez guy is like I don't think he's going to be a very good debater. I mean, Kennedy is a politician. You know, he's gonna he and he's gonna be able to say what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And Hotez is immediately going to be on his back foot 
trying to put out every fire that gets lit, right? And so it's it's not a great format, I think, for this topic specifically, and probably against this type of opponent. And I'm not I'm not saying anything like I don't think I, I think Kennedy's a true believer. I don't think he's like a grifter or a fucking liar or anything like that. I have no evidence of that. So I'm not I'm not saying um, that he's um, arguing in bad faith or anything like that. So I don't want to, I don't want anybody. Well, let me ask you this about Kennedy. I just don't think Was that, he, because this is, this sure. is another thing about the, with the vax, anti-vax community is because there, see, let me, how do I put this? Because there's a lot of uh, fucked up ways that the government behaved about COVID, right? A lot of things they got wrong, a lot of things they lied about or a lot of things they were wrong about there's a lot of people that have questions about the COVID vaccine. But then what's happened is <clears throat> people that were anti-vax before before COVID have latched on to 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 this. And now it's and you know, because I've said this before on this pod, is that, you know, it <clears throat> you have you have every reason to be mistrustful of the government. So it's like you're not sure about the COVID vaccine and all that. It's like I could give you leeway there. But it's the people that are like, Actually, all vaccines like that's that's where it gets uh, that's where it gets dicey. And I don't know which kind of person um, Kennedy is because I haven't heard I hadn't heard of him before like last week. So <clears throat> he is he has he been anti-vax p- since before the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. He's I, I've I've known him as a fairly prominent anti-vaxer for. Over a decade, for sure. See. I would have to like look exactly when. Wow. Rob, so you know you what know, it is, Rob. I, it's too. See, I, I probably came across this motherfucker a decade ago and just erased him from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between me and you, Rob. It's so much of your bandwidth is taken up by your enemies. I, I, this is true. I focus revenge one at a time, maybe two. <laughs> when playing the long game, but yeah. So, so yeah. That, that's a whole other thing. It's like so again. What are you gonna do to change? What are you gonna do to change this person's mind, or what are you gonna do to change the minds of his fans? See, for me, it's not not only is it a mistake yeah. for this doctor to, to take to take the debate. I ain't gonna do anything. I I wish I could rewind the clock and talk Joe into never having politicians on his pod. The, the, listen, that they, would be they're the scum. They're scum. All of them. They have an agenda. And you get in whether you want it or not. You get. I will never have a politician on this pod. <laughs> not that they would want to. You know, it's like. But but I just mean right. even if I if if the day came where this was just as big as JRE, I would never talk to a politician because because they all have an agenda. They will throw you under the bus in a heartbeat. It's it's a move to them. They're not really trying to come on and just you know have a discussion like anybody that drink and smoke weed that. Won't, that won't come on JRE and drink and smoke weed. That, that, fuck them. <laughs> you know, like they're not there for the right reasons. That's the, I really honestly believe that they all have an agenda. Even if you happen to agree with them, you know, sure. Like, like I just, it's not worth it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even I, talk lump, to I'd lump, one. I'd lump Bernie in there. I think it was. I think it was a mistake to have Bernie. Oh, agreed. I think Bernie was the first I, one, I, right? I, I, Bernie was the first mistake. He wasn't the first one, but I mean. Yeah, but that was, I mean, it was definitely a mistake. I mean, I just, I would rather he talk to fighters and comedians and scientists and. Yeah, well, you know, back when, well, yeah, because cause the, the politicians are all, not only are they full of shit most of the time, not only do they have an agenda, but they're so, there's, um, but to have a platform where they go, to, to have a, a thing where they get to say their talking points and they're not challenged. Like, like they don't know, mm-hmm. like they're, they're usually in an environment where it's all a constant challenge, you know, and, mm-hmm. and like, like they don't deserve the free, uh, they don't deserve to come on JRE under the guise of just having a friendly, discuss- it's like they're, a lot of them are fucking dirt bags, you know what I mean? Or they walk off the show and say some, and talk, and talk shit. It's like, ah, I fucking right. hate them. I hate every single one of them. Like if you if, if the moment like you could be the best person I've ever known the moment I hear you running for office I fucking hate your guts. Yeah, I, I just uh, man like who's what politician is worth talking to? Now listen, now I talk to their wives, 
I talk to their spouses. Yeah, they got nothing. Because, cause, you know, they're not as good at keeping the act up, you know? Mm, mm-hmm. They don't have to be on 100% of the time. They just got to be on, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day. They got to smile. And, uh, they don't really, you know, they got to, they got the po- talking points down pat, but they ain't, we're not, they're not practiced at it, you know? Because being a politician is like crowd, it's like the shittiest kind of crowd work. You know, you have practiced, rehearsed responses to every question. You're not, nothing real is coming out of these people's um, mouths, you know? They're hacks, is what you're saying. Yeah, they're hacks. Unless you get the, listen, the only time, you, you, do politicians ever go on hot ones? Exactly. You know why? So. You know why? Because the real you comes out when your fucking mouth is burning. Did Arnold go on it? Who? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, but that was after. Okay. Maybe he, maybe he did. Yeah. But I just mean no no current candidate will go on hot one. Because well, you, Brian, Hillary Clinton doesn't have to because she carries hot sauce in her purse. <laughs> right, right. So does Beyonce. Right. Yeah, but that's right. what I mean. It's like they won't go on hot ones because you have to drop the facade. When your shit's burning, you go, mm-hmm. like like you remember the classic internet video of the of the um of the reporter, it was a black reporter in the field, and he was like, and that and that'll be channel seven <laughs> and then a fly flew in the box. God damn. Son of a bitch. Right. When something when something you don't want in your mouth is in your mouth, you can't be fake. It's impossible. And that's why they won't go on hot ones. You know? Now, I would interview a politician right after if we could eat spicy chicken wings or drink mm. bourbon. That's why, again, that's why they don't, that's why they don't drink on when they go on rope. They, they won't have a sip. Right. Because oh, that shit loosen you up too much. You know? It's like I so so Man, I'm just how, saying how much. How much what? How much better? How much better would the debates be if they had to get wasted beforehand? I don't think they need. Really, I don't think they even need to get wasted. They just need to pop some Molly. Oh, there. <sighs> nah, that's too much. That's too strong. <laughs> or something shrooms, something. They need to, or some some mind altering substance where they get, where they can't lie. Uh, or just 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 half a zanny. That was Rick Perry. Just something to yeah, take half a zanny. I like that. Rick Perry was high on, they think, Vicodin. And he was, like, talking to the public and everything. Who's Rick Perry? Rick Perry's the former governor of Texas. Oh, see. While he was governor. He ran He ran for president. Yeah. He ran, or he ran for the nomination. So the he, nomination he was on president. Vicodin when he was debating? Uh, after a debate, and he was at a press conference, and you can tell he's all loose, and that's what got him out of the race. Oh, wow. What did he say? Did he say something? Did he say... See... Did he say something embarrassed? No, it was just the way he slurred and how he was just all, hey, guys, like that. Yeah, well, that's on his hand. See, this is the problem. Somebody somebody finally is like a little bit cool, and we, we punish him for it. He didn't even say anything fucked up, right? He just, he yeah. just was... So that was the same thing with our up. attorney yeah. general in Texas. But cool doesn't, cool doesn't score you points on the conservative side. He's a, he's conservative Fair. or liberal? He's, he's Republican. Yeah, cool. To, cool doesn't score you points. Um, they, you gotta be you could you could be a fucking asshole or you could be a goofball, but you can't be cool. I don't even think goofball gets you very far anymore. I mean, look what happened to Jeb. Jeb Bush he got eaten alive. See, yeah, see Jeb what I mean? Bush got eaten alive. Uh, Trump. Do y'all feel how boring this episode got? We've been talking about politics <laughs> All right. All right. for Let's twenty on, minutes. <laughs> Let's 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 talk about let's talk about the uh, let's talk about this this fucking submarine. Uh yeah 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 okay so there's uh yeah the, so there was a apparently there was a billionaire on board. So this was a this is like a tourism thing where you take a submersible with like five other people down into the wreckage of the Titanic. And tickets cost $250,000. It's an eight-day excursion because you, like, go out there on a boat and, it, like, uh, from Newfoundland or whatever. And the boat stops and then you get in the submersible and the submersible goes down. And um, the submersible has been missing at while we're recording this. Um, it's been missing for a couple of days. Oh, they're dead. And nobody... Yeah, nobody can find it. Apparently, has like 
seven days worth of oxygen in reserve or something like that. But by the time this comes out, they will have either been found or they will be dead. Well, um, so they've been missing for how long now? I think as of this recording, it's been like 48 hours. So they've got seven days of oxygen in reserve in addition to what they went down with. Yeah, it's like seven to nine days, depending on how. Because I mean, you know. Yeah, but that, but what they te- what, what they test like that, that on seven days of oxygen for the max amount of people. Did that include people fucking and and, and fighting? And where where are they where are they <laughs> capacity? Where are they, where are they shitting and pissing? It says capacity is five people for ninety six hours. There is a toilet on it. Um, you have to climb over the toilet to look out the one porthole in it. The problem is that there's no GPS and there's no real tracking system on it. The way that it navigates is it's supposed to stay underneath the ship that brings it out and it sends text messages back and forth. They pilot this thing with a Logitech gaming pad and uh, and the, the door is only accessible or only able to be opened from the outside because it's bolted shut from the outside. So even if they were to surface, well, this they just can't a, get out unless somebody finds this it. This is just a, a, what is it, a, a cacophony. Just, just, a, just a lot of bad ideas put together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really stupid. A door that can only be opened from the outside. That's the controller. Wow. Wow. They couldn't even get like an X. Okay. Mm, not even an official <laughs> Xbox. This is uh, and, and okay. So if there's if there's only one if there's only one porthole, porthole is is what sailors say for window because they're fucking stupid. Um, if you're if there's only one porthole, what is the point of going down on this submersible? Is there what the fuck is down there? You can't look out if you can't see out of it. They have cameras. Yeah, but what are they doing? Like, is this, is this is a tourist thing, right? It's a tourist thing. You go down, okay. there's like three people plus a pilot plus a, like, tour guide, basically. And you go down into the wreckage, and the tour guide says, all right, if you go look out of the, like, they have, like, cameras, right, with screens and stuff. And they're like, okay, look at the screens now. You can see that oh, okay. you know, we're see. in, this is the old ballroom or whatever the fuck. You know, and this is the grand staircase, and you can see how time has ravaged the Look, whatever. You this know? ain't really got nothing to do with nothing, but I guarantee you, it ain't no black people on that sh- on that submarine. <laughs> I guarantee I you, correct. I would put money on it. Ain't no black people on ain't no black people on the boat that lost them. Well, fuck about the Titanic. This is crazy. You, for you to go down on a, for you to get inside, for you to get inside a vehicle that you can't open. Think about that. I wouldn't get in a car that I couldn't open. You know what I'm saying? That, that's a police car. Would you get in the backseat of a police car for funsies? Of course not. This is crazy. For you to get submerged down to the depth that the Titanic is. Right? Which is out in the Arctic. For you... For you to go down, go underwater in a submersible that you can't get out of, even in an emergency. So wait a minute, where, how, wait a minute, where, how did they lose them? Did the, did the, did the, did the batteries die on the Logitech controller? <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the way it's supposed to work is the ship takes them out to like right over where the Titanic is. The, the wreckage. Although the wreck, there's two pieces. There's two like giant chunks of the Titanic that are separated by like 2,600 feet or something. So they go over where one of them is, and the submersible is supposed to go straight down. Now, once they go down, they do not have the technology on board to navigate themselves. What they have is they have a system that basically pings the equivalent of a text message back and forth between the ship and the submersible. But it has to be like directly underneath the ship for that to go back and forth. So what probably happened was there's currents down there because they're twelve and a half thousand feet or something underneath the uh, underneath the surface. So there are currents that probably knocked them off course, right? And then you don't know what direction the current brought them. 
And every hour that goes by, they the the radius of where they might be gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But also, and here's, the cone, here's the other side. Where's your yeah. backup plan, my nigga? Did you not know that this could happen? Why? How could? How could? You, how could your plan be that the ship? That the, the submersible has to stay exactly underneath a ship that's twelve thousand miles, or twelve twelve thousand feet above it, and if and if that and if that for some reason is not the case, everyone dies. You don't have a backup plan. There's no emergency <laughs> rise to the surface button. Nothing, because the plan well, can't the plan can't be that the ship has to be has to get back on top of them or they die. That's crazy. <laughs> That's absolutely nuts. How does something like this even get approved? What the fuck is wrong with these people? <laughs> well, it wasn't 100% approved. Yeah, no shit. What, again, you're going to get in a vehicle that you can't open and you can't drive and go and go 12,000 feet under the water. Yeah, all, I mean, I'm not going to say y'all deserve to die, but I mean... I'm not gonna shed a tear. That's 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 level. That's black belt level stupidity. Yeah, you you should wake up in heaven and get a black belt for how fucking stupid you are. That doesn't sound like a good. And they paid money for this. Oh my god, it costs a quarter million dollars. It costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go on this. This see, this is another thing I'm discovering. As I am starting to make a little more money, I am by no means rich. By no means rich. But I am in the proximity of a lot of people that do have a lot of money, you know. Um, and and what I've noticed is that this is going to sound crazy, but this is the only way I can think to say it. People with money get taken advantage of just as often as people without. You know what I mean? Because when you're when you're poor, you get taken advantage of either because you're uneducated, like they know that you're ignorant about something, or you're desperate. Like they know you don't have a choice, right? But when you're rich, you get taken advantage of because they either because you're uneducated, right? Or they know that you they know that you're that you're assuming that the, because of the amount of money you're spending that everything's going to be on the up and up you know what i mean so it's like you so it's like just, my, so my point is what i'm learning recently is like just because you spend a lot of money on something don't mean it's right it it doesn't mean it's all on the up and up it doesn't mean it's going to be to you know to the height of luxury or none of that shit you know what i'm saying you can or you can go to some nice ass steakhouse and order a 70 dollar steak and it tastes like shit you know, or the sides of bullshit or whatever. Like, it, it doesn't happen often, but it can happen, you know. Or you can you can fucking, you can rent a fucking luxury, you know, five-star hotel room and it's bed bugs in that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Or something like that. You know, or you can, you can, you can buy, you know, you can get, go get brand new, you know, tip top of the notch, you know, uh, whatever the fuck. You know, whatever it is. But my point is, it's like, just because you spend a lot of money don't mean people ain't trying to take advantage. It's greedy motherfuckers out there. You could be overpaying people. You could be you could be tipping the fuck out of people. And they'll, they, like, it, it doesn't mean you're going to get the quality shit. And this, it applies to this. Because my thing is, I, I, I can't call these people stupid. Because, again, if you spend a quarter million dollars on something, because I'm sure they didn't know that, they, that the chick communicates with text messages or is being controlled by a fucking. The owner was on board. So he's a multi-billionaire from England named Hamish Harding, and his son was also on board. On board of what? On board of that submarine. Ha, okay. Well, they, well, yeah. But the thing is, once we started running out of oxygen, those be the first two motherfuckers I kill. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like that. If, we kill, if we kill them, we'll get a couple more days. So they asked his stepson, uh, Brian uh, is his stepson. It says, uh, it might be just distasteful being here but my family would want me to be at Blink-182 show as my favorite band and music helps me in through these difficult times. That's what he said. He goes, I have to, it helps me this Blink-182 concert. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably his, that's probably like rich kid way of going, I told those stupid motherfuckers. Or it was a setup and he's going to get the money. 
No, well, I mean, listen, on, on the one, it does seem kind of ins- insensitive to go to a Blink-182 concert when your brother and father are missing. But at the same time, it's like, why should my life interrupt because you're stupid? It's not like you, it, it, it'd be different if you were kidnapped or, you know, if you were missing because like a plane went down or there was some kind of crash or incident, but you did this on purpose. You know what I mean? You just went walking out into the, into the, <laughs> you just went, you just went out into the abyss with the, with the flimsiest of protections. He's so. gone to space and the South Pole too. He's going to space. Oh, I bet he could open that door from the inside. Well, space. Right. Well, he. Well, yeah. I mean, we can get into that debate a whole other time. But yeah, um, yeah. This is dumb. This is dumb. And I and I don't know. <clears throat> I don't feel bad for the billionaire that took that motherfucker down. I do hope they get found. But man, you know, I'm, and I'm sure for them being on that boat, I'm sure the longer they're down there, the more, you know, it probably not. The billionaire guy is probably taking no responsibility. You know, yeah, but it's his fault for sure. This is a, this is the worst way to explore the ocean. No, I don't know who, where they, what, where they bought this thing, or what, it's probably for scuba or low, low depth shit. But you know. This is this is a mistake that was completely and totally avoided. Avoidable. You know, to have no emergency plan, no backup plan, to have the arrogance to go, well, the way I designed it, it's gonna work out. They had a French they had a French Navy diver driving. Paul Henry is the one. The French Navy. Yeah. I didn't even know France had a navy. They nicknamed him Mr. Titanic. Oh wow. Okay, because that's his expertise. Okay, all right. So maybe he can Titanic they ass to the surface. Well, it won't matter because they can't get out. Yeah, because you know, because I hate it when people use that use expertise to justify bullshit. Like, bro, what the fuck does having a navy diver on board mean anything? He can't drive the ship. His expertise doesn't come into play in any way, shape, or form, except maybe telling them how slow to rise to the surface. Oh, but they can't do that neither. Oh, he's good on that Logitech controller. That's mind blowing to me. That's mind blowing to me. That 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 they, that that's their plan. That they can't. There's no other thing. Uh, well, yeah, this story is frustrating. Um, text from Samsung. My shit is on the way. So somebody just asked me for a favor and they spelled my name wrong. Okay. Oh, sweet. Uh, you want to do some uh, updates on old business from the mailbag? Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Um, yeah. yeah, let me see. Um, is this... Oh, wow, Tony. Is this a new Tony? Oh, wow, we got a couple things in here. Casey... Oh, two Apple Vision Pro stories. Um, well, you know what? Let's do Tony first. That's always a treat. To, to change things politically is just a normal old guy. Uh, Gabriel Princeps did, but... Uh, it didn't work out so well for anyone, did it? Uh, hey, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for telling you boys you should get outside and stop playing Diablo. I, I sound like your auntie, but I do forget that uh, all these kids don't grow up in New Zealand where it's all just sunshine and beaches and all that kind of good shit. Uh, but hey, Rob, congratulations, bro. It's going to be a hell of a ride for you, and you are going to love it. Oh, was he talking about Diablo or the kid? <laughs> I think he just. I think he just, I think he just that, endorsed uh... Diablo. <laughs> There's really no way of knowing, to be honest. Um, all right, Zach thank Ray. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Always well, a pleasure. I, I wanna, wait, before we, I want. I want to say thank you, Tony. I also want to say a lot. Uh, um, I got a couple of messages on um, on Twitter, and I also got some comments on the episode congratulating me. So I really do appreciate that, everybody that that. Say congratulations. It means a lot. We got a lot of e- uh, emails about the AFR glasses versus Apple. Yeah. Hope all is well. Now I didn't see the official release for the Apple AR glasses, but have heard it brought up a couple times now. Maybe they're not comparable, but I've 
then had a pair of AR glasses that work well and look significantly better than the Apple ones. I imagine they will have a lot more capabilities considering the price difference, but I would have thought that I would have thought they would have made improvements on what's already available, like making them cordless. I've been using mine to use my phone, play Xbox, watch movies, even send this email. It gets you a 201 micro LED screen, wow, which has allowed me to do stuff I love. That was becoming more and more difficult to do ever since I started losing my sight in my 20s. MacTel Type 2, whack as fuck. Wait a minute, is he saying type 2 diabetes? No, MacTel type 2 is um, a form of, it's not macular degeneration, but it's like, it's a progressive disease of the macula. So it's like you slowly go, it's like, you know how if you get macular degeneration? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of similar to that. <clears throat> so he's saying- It might actually be a form of that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally sure. So he's saying these are the equivalent of a 201 inch screen. And Diablo on a 201-inch screen is pretty crazy. Combine it with a Wooger haptic vest, and shit can get real insane. Oh, wow. Well, I just learned about two things that I probably shouldn't buy, but I'm going to. And is that the Apple Glass? So I, I looked into, I looked into, he, he's talking about the um, X-Reels, X-R-E-A-L. Which I did um, a little bit of research on those and looked at some reviews. Reviews are mixed, um, but uh, generally positive. I think for the X reels, they they look like pretty close to normal glasses. They kind of look like um, Wayfarers or whatever, and they have the OLED OLED screen in there, but they're not really doing what the Apple visions are doing um it's really more just a way for you to have a screen that's like in your glasses which is cool but um that's very different from having like a true mixed reality uh experience or having the various things that the apple vision has like um uh it's got a it's got a much much higher uh definition visual input and it has the cameras outside so it can take it can do overlays and stuff like that. None of that stuff is what the X reel can do. Yeah, but also, you know, I like he said, I think it's very unusual for Apple to jump into a market where they are not solving a problem. Like usually Apple doesn't do things unless they can do things the Apple way. And this this so far is like it the only way the only thing they're doing it the Apple way is that it looks very distinct from an Oculus or what have you, but they aren't innovating in any way. Like, you know, they're they're taking what's already been done and they're doing it better, I guess, but they aren't solving any... True. Really? Yeah, I disagree on that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not, like, insanely hype about the Apple Vision Pro, and I'm definitely not going to buy one for $3,500. Rob, stop acting like you're not an um, Apple I'm slut. Like you an Apple <laughs> slut. <laughs> I do have a lot of Apple shit, I will say that. But um, but I also hate all of my Apple products. Like they piss me off at least once a day. Um, but I think what the Apple Vision does that's different, there are some innovations there. They, I mean, there's a ton of patents that they got on these things. The The definition is like better than anything. So, okay, the, let me take, take a step back. What problem are they solving? They're, they're solving a lot of the problems that lead people to not want to wear AR glasses. So part of that is- That that's uh, not made get, by people Apple. People get headaches. Well, yeah, that's part of it. Right. But it's like, but it's like no, as somebody who, because I, I have really fucked up vision. Um, and so a lot of VR headsets um, cause me like headaches and I can't, and, or, and motion sickness and stuff like that. And so they've done a lot of things to enhance the um, pass through, like the pass through function, which is where you can like see what's around you in real time with like extremely low latency. And so that fixes a lot of those problems. The high definition, the higher definition on the visual output to your eyes fixes a lot of those, a lot of the, a lot of those problems. There's less smearing. Um, there's uh, 
better like pass through surround because they're using a lot of the same technology as the AirPods, right, things like you, that. But, but you just so, you just said what I said in a longer yeah. way. It's like yeah, they they have they have improved on the things that every other manufacturer has improved on. They've just done it more so, but they haven't made in any innovation. They ha- there's nothing that their headset does that other other ones don't or can't, right? They, they, they might uh, do they might do things better, but again, they haven't. No, the the eye and hand tracking is new. No other no other headsets do that. The only thing that comes the 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 only headset which is in the same vertical or class or whatever you want category as the Vision is the Hololens two, and this is. I mean, there there are multiple well, well, about eye, half a dozen different. The, the eye tracking is insane. Okay. I love that. I do love that. Um, I don't know if that's a must buy fe- like if that's a feature that would convince somebody to just buy one. But uh, the hand tracking, I'm not sure how I feel about that because that I mean that can be an up or down. I mean, obviously they they well they claim they aren't competing with VR. Right, AR is its own thing, but this is MR. This is mixed reality, right? Which right. is new. I mean, mixed That's reality just is a not new. Term. It's 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 so it's it's so fucking frustrating. But it's like, well, no, because like AR. So for instance, these X real glasses, they're they're AR. They're augmented reality because all it takes to be augmented reality is literally just like your phone's screen, like as a little picture in picture in front of your face. That's AR. This is miles beyond that, where you have real time overlays on things. Even well, that's, the hollow lens well, that's the minimum. That. A, that's the minimum to be augmented reality. But yeah, they're 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 they are capitalizing on the dream that was Google Glass. Remember that? Like, well, yeah. Well, there's like there's things on top of the world. You know, I mean, yeah. I guess you know, Pokemon Go was augmented reality in a, in a sense, right? But but um, again, you know. There, to me, it's like th- there's not that one Apple feature that makes you go, "Oh yeah, these are worth three thousand dollars." Or how how much they cost? What are they three? No, they're four thousand. Thirty-five hundred. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know. Are you gonna get a pair for thirty-five hundred? I'm, I'm definitely not gonna get the the. I'm, so that's the thing. I have a lot of Apple stuff, but I'm not really an early adopter when it comes to this stuff. So I'll wait for the next version. That's gonna be like 2000 and then I'll try to figure out some way to convince my work to buy it as a work expense. Mm. I am. You going to get the 3500? You going to drop that? Yep. Oh, wow. But I I I I I I want to build on top of it and if it works it works meaning with podcasts so people can be inside the podcast when they put theirs on. So I'm like producing and like looking around and they're sitting down with theirs being able to see what we're doing. Okay. Um, I, you know, I doubt this will catch on, but who knows? I mean, like I said, Apple has such a cult because I, I was saying this before when I got my Oculus. I don't know if you, you weren't around yet, but, uh, but when I first got my Oculus, I was like, oh yeah, once Apple starts doing this, it's going to catch on. But I, this is, I was not as impressed when I saw what they finally came up with as I usually am when Apple introduces some new product. That's all I'm saying. I wasn't as like, oh, you know, that does a, a lot of cool things, you know. But anything that's go, oh, I absolutely got to buy it. Uh, I don't know. What MP3 players were around when they dropped the iPod? No, no, Zoom no, was no, no, no. Zune was after the iPod. Um, Zune was after. What was before? Yeah, I mean, I know that there were some. Um, I, well, I, I had a Rio. Um, man, that, I still Who made that Rio? Who thing. made Rio? Um, Rio. Just Rio? Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so, so the iPod was not, there were already MP3 players, but why was it, why did the iPod break through and make MP3 players like a thing that just everybody had? Um, it was the wheel. That little, the little touch wheel. Yeah. Um, also, um, well, it was just clicks originally. Apple Store, like the they're able to get their music easier. Um, 
iTunes was kind of a pain in the ass, but yeah, yeah. I, but but also it was yeah. Apple. It was Apple, and, and so they already had kind of a reputation. And but what did know. they have the reputation for? From their computers, because I mean that that was what's that? From their computers, it was a. They had already started the exclusivity brand, you know, back then. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if like the. And I think Apple that, iPod was a success because of the I'm a Mac commercials. Uh, like, that's just. Well, they were the only MP3 MP3 player that was advertising at all. I don't know if that's true. Let me look that up. All the celebrities had them too. Right. I mean, they're they're really really good at marketing, but they but also they make solid they make solid products. <laughs> they um. But what what, what 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 are you getting at though? What's your point? Well, my question is, what was the, I hate the term quantum leap, I can't think of a better one, but like, because quantum leap means the opposite of what people mean it to mean, but like, what what was the quantum leap in technology or user experience that the iPod represents? Like you're saying, because like, I'm thinking of this in terms of, if what? there were already MP3 players, what? but people didn't adopt them for whatever reason, like they were difficult to use or the form factor was ugly or the capacity wasn't high enough to really put a lot of stuff on them or was difficult to put music what? on them or whatever. And then the iPod comes out and it's like, oh no, we we haven't created a new thing. Like MP3 players already exist, but we've solved all of the barriers to entry that prevent normal people from using well, that, MP3 well, players. Well, that was the big I can see how the Apple Vision could be the same thing. Yeah, but what the if Apple they, but again, could be like, but, look, there were already No, but good, but again, ahead. you they you took things that they improved on and titled them as solutions. They didn't solve anything. They just they just improved on the things that every other thing place is trying to improve on. I mean, and, and also they claim to be. I mean, none of, I don't know anyone that's actually touched it. You know, this was their, their little, but but I mean, but the MP3 player, like you, you glossed it, you glossed over it. The biggest problem they saw was the barrier to entry because before that, MP3s were like nerd shit, and you had to actually like know a little something about computers. To it was just intimidating to the average person. Where Apple made it simple and easy to get okay. your music onto your iPod. I'll put it like this. So one, so I think it was the Ars Technica review of the Apple Vision that I read where they were touting a whole bunch of different things. And like one of the main things I kept going back to was like, this is just like sharper and has lower latency than anything else I've seen. And the pass-through functionality is way better. Meaning what I mean by that is its ability to allow you to like consume whatever like movie you're watching because you can watch like 3D movies and basically be in it. And you can still sort of hear what's going on around you in the same way the iPod, the AirPods have a Passive, transparency. Right. And you can see uh, also yeah. what's happening. Right. Yeah. You can also see what's happening. And every other AR thing, like AR headset, the HoloLens, if you do AR with like Quest or anything like that, they have like, it'll have a screen. And the screen is, it looks like it's, you know, let's say 10 feet in front of you or five feet in front of you, but it's really just overlaid on everything. Whereas with the with the Apple Vision, if somebody walks through where the screen quote unquote would be, they it actually like animates them walking through the screen. Now right. that seems like a really small thing, but for somebody like me who doesn't, I have two VR headsets that I don't use because I'm prone to headaches, and and motion sickness. If that actually solves, to some degree, that problem, that's huge. But you, what you and that does mean that I probably will get one of these things at some point. But again, that that's. But that but what I'm saying that's not an incremental, that's not an incremental innovation. Well, that's you're saying actually, you're, you're saying if if the thing that they slightly improved on solves a problem, that's not the that's not them solving a problem. You just said if that, it solves a problem. That, 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 that's you're saying them, if it solves a problem, it doesn't solve a problem. No, no. That's them improving on something that you're hoping is the solution to something. That's not that's not them solving a problem. That's just them improving on something that already exists. That's not them in, inventing anything new. That's not them introducing something uh, unique. That's just them 
fixing something that or trying to fix something that that uh, all because I put it like this. Whatever you you say, you have you get motion sickness from wearing your other headsets, right? Because the yeah, I can't wear it for longer than you know. Because the resolution and the pass through isn't strong enough, right? Well, that was in the latency, right? Well, in the first generation, it it was less so, right? So when the Quest Two came out, you didn't go, oh well, they've improved the pass through, so this might be the solution to the problem. And it's like, no, that doesn't make it, it didn't solve the problem. They just made it better. They made it a little Quest better. Ha- Quest, Quest 2 doesn't have like a MR functionality like that. Like that, that does, that's not a, that's not like, a thing. Like animating works. people walking through. No, but you can, you can definitely see your environment when you have them on. If you want you to. Can, you can kind of see like parts of your environment. Like I don't understand how you have such strong feelings about a headset you've never worn. You well, I I don't have I don't have I mean I'm I'm not buying one because we're nerds, <laughs> right? So it's like, what what do you think the average person is going to look at this headset and 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 go, oh well, that's different. No, the the average person isn't going, oh, the, you know, they've improved this one thing, so that that's a reason to go spend thirty five hundred dollars. Now listen, it's well, a it's okay. a bunch of people out there that's going to go, it's Apple, I want it, right? That's a that's a Small percentage of people, well, not 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 small enough, but that's a that's a percentage of people out there. It's like it's Apple. I want it. I don't give a fuck. And there's other people out there like um, I don't like I want one of these. And if I get one, it's gonna be Apple. But I don't feel like FOMO if I don't go get it. Right? That that maybe all together that's like twenty percent of the people that's gonna buy this. Mm-hmm. All we on the Let other side just- of the spectrum is people like me who was like I'm 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 all I love all things tech. Um, I've had, like you said, I have, t- I have two of these headsets too. I've made the same mistakes and I, I feel like for, for us co- sort of early adopters, cause I'll say, well, I'm guessing you said you have two of them. You have a quest and you have a, um, you have a Vive or whatever for steam. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so it's like, well, I don't have the Vive anymore. I, re- I sold the Vive, but I, I used to have a Vive. But I mean. So for people like me who've already bought a couple of these and I'm looking at this one and I'm going, I don't see anything that makes me feel like I got to run out and get that. Like I don't see anything new that makes me feel like this is just going to be a a better and improved version of all the stuff that I already have that I already don't use very often, you know, because this will definitely be one of those things that you buy in the first month, three months, you're going to force yourself to use it because you spent thirty five hundred dollars. You know, so you can be walking around your house. You know, you can be rocking your baby through the, <laughs> through through the, through the fucking. Thing. But it's like eventually you're gonna be like, what do I need this for? I can just hold my laptop right here. You know. I think I figured out why the iPod got because remember with Napster, you can just download music for free. Mm-hmm. So the iPod comes out. iTunes came out before that. Then the iPod. Then eight months later, Napster's done. And then right after that. Uh, iTunes, the music store comes out. So they got rid of their competition and then everybody had to get their music from iTunes. But you think, I don't think Apple was a part of the Napster fight. The Napster, they were, okay, so uh, they took it off of their, uh, you couldn't get it on their applications anymore. They took Napster off. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, they're coming for the money. They're coming for the money. All right, we got a little too deep in the weeds about that. There's another email about this. <laughs> this AR glass. I mean, we, um, we 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 kind of covered some of the stuff they're talking about there, but this is um, from. This, what about the one about prison? Yeah, I want to do the one about prison. But, well, that, uh, oh, that came in early shout this morning. Out to Casey for he, he he we brought up a lot of the stuff um, about the Hololens too that Casey brought up. But thanks, Casey, for for writing it. Yeah, Casey, no one cares about your opinion. <laughs> Try again. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, we covered a lot of the things. But yo, B, love the pod. Just wanted to give some. Oh, okay, so first of all, I love this, guys. This is how to do it right here. This person in the subject line, they are they put the episode that they reference. That's beautiful because some people write in and they go, "You said," and I'm like, "I don't remember saying that." I say a lot of stuff. I say stuff for a living. I say stuff every day. So, like, be specific because, I, you know, if you can give me some kind of, you know. Anyway, 
Yo B, love the pod. Just wanted to give some input about something you both touched on in the past. Episode 66, Gans Flicker. What is Gans Flicker? Gans Flicker was the name of the episode because that's the thing that can in uh, give you um, hallucinations okay. using flickering lights. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm from BG County, Maryland. So am I. But I moved to Jacksonville, Florida two years ago to start a business. I got my life in order now. But years ago, I was a pretty big loser. Mm. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. It takes take a man to admit that they were a loser. I've been to prison twice for nonviolent crimes, and I managed to remain nonviolent once I arrived. It's completely possible to exist in the prison system as a man of peace and never be assaulted or extorted. I even wrote poetry for some guys to send home to girlfriends or mothers like you imagined you could do. Other guys reviewed legal documents for upcoming appeals or, or sold clothing for sale or became the video game broker. They had TVs and Xbox 360 when I was there. Yes, even at the higher security sometimes because it keeps some violent men preoccupied. Okay. The point I'm making is you only receive trouble if you intentionally swim in the troubled waters, like join a gang, get involved with the drug trade, rack up a debt, etc. You both are highly intelligent individuals and would find yourselves creating opportunities within that restricted economy and therein would lie your safety. Dangerous men are valuable there, but so are smart ones. P.S. I saw you in Jacksonville not too long ago. I was the black guy who told you he loved the pod and dapped you up on the way out. But despite your terrible experience at the hotel, which everyone here knows is a worthless place, please come back. My business will put you in the nicest hotel or Airbnb or fly you home that night. You're a truly dope comic who I love to watch. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Perfect you're right. Email. I, huh? Perfect email. Five stars. Uh, five Perfect stars. Email. It was broken up into paragraphs. It referenced the episode that it was referencing. He was concise. He was straight to the point. Uh, and it started with love, ended with love. And I appreciate that. Um, yeah, and it wasn't a question. It was just a statement. Which, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, um, you know, because a lot of, there's a big YouTube community of of uh, people that got, that were in prison, you know, that start YouTube channels and they talk about prison and interview former prisoners. And, and there were two that I used to watch a lot. Um, one was a guy from San Diego. I forget his name. Big giant motherfucker used to, you know, be in like the white gang or whatever. I forget his fucking name now because it's been so long since I watched one. Another one from this guy named Big Herc called Fresh Out. Um, um, I forget what was the fucking white dude's name. Real intense motherfucker, like still. Um, but uh, but anyway, he's San Diego. Yeah, he's a San Diego guy. Yeah, <clears throat> but he. But the point is, you know, from watching a lot of those channels and watching. Uh, you know, them interview a lot of people and talk about a lot of experience. I think it depends on one. I think it depends on. Wh- and obviously, I'm talking to somebody that's been to prison twice, but but I think it depends on where you go to prison, not where you get locked up. Because sometimes here's another thing I just I learned is that they'll send you, like California will send you to you know Colorado to go to prison. You know what I mean? Type of shit. They got deals and. Anyway, the point is, <clears throat> so it depends on where you go to prison and whether it's at the federal or state level, right? And so it's where you are, where you're from, and where you're where you're in prison. Because I think this might be the first guy I've heard say that you can go to prison and and stay completely peaceful and neutral and not join the gang and not get into no violence. But 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 maybe maybe those guys would say the same if they were. <clears throat> because being smart, I mean, how would people even know you were smart? Yeah, that that would be it, it's still that's this is one of my biggest fears is going to prison. Just for nah. Cause it would mean I did something stupid. <laughs> and if and if I'm somewhere where cause I was always in the impression that like if your intelligence cause everywhere everywhere I've ever been, my my intelligence has been an advantage. Being smarter has never been a disadvantage. But going to prison, I felt like, oh well, that's completely useless. You know, but <clears throat> yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. I've never heard anybody really put it like this. Dangerous men are valuable, so are smart ones. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, and I do remember this guy because there was, oh, well, got me on there. I remember somebody which bought me a, whatever, Jacksonville. Oh, I could talk about Jacksonville for. That's a good news.